Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. Oh, let's praise the Lord one more time. Oh, let's shout unto the Lord for a moment. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish every apostolic would give the Lord a shout of praise right now. Hallelujah. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. We're unapologetically apostolic around here. We are unapologetically biblical today, and we believe in lifting our voice and praising God just like the Bible says. We believe it's all right to jump and to leap and to shout and to clap our hands and to wave our hands and to praise God because he is great and greatly to be praised. Anybody in here been saved out of sin? Anybody had your sins washed away at baptism in Jesus' name? Anybody been filled with the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking with tongues? You've already raised your hand if you've been healed in your body. Anybody had a financial miracle happen? We've got a lot of reasons in this church to praise God, and we're going to keep right on doing that. Oh, hallelujah. One more time, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. So good to be here this morning. Thank you for the presence of the Lord that's in this place. And I'm rejoicing for all that the Lord is doing in this church and in this region. I think at this point, I, th I believe if we, what I've uh, spoken about Pastor Booker about. I think we've had 80 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to do it again today in this service. Do you believe that? He wants to do it today in this service. If you're here without the Holy Ghost, God wants to fill you today. Today is the day of salvation. Praise God. I want the Lord to help us this morning. If you have your Bibles, you don't have to turn to each of these uh, passages, but Matthew 28 and verse 18. We'll also be reading from Matthew 19, 26. And we'll be reading a verse from Luke 1, 37. Praise God. Beginning at Matthew 28 and 18. I feel faith in this house this morning for people to receive the Holy Ghost. Even we're an apostolic church, that means we have church just like the apostles did in the New Testament that you can read about in your Bible. And a part of that is that we believe that God heals people's bodies of sickness, disease, infirmity, pain. He's been doing it. You saw the hands go up. This isn't magic. This isn't make-believe. It can happen, and it's the will of God for it to happen here in this service. Not only can you receive the Spirit of God, but you can receive physical healing in your body. Hallelujah. Praise God. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. All power. Matthew 19 and verse 26. Matthew 19 and 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Hallelujah. He's got all power and all things are possible. And then finally, Luke 1 and 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. He is a very definitive, clear, and precise God. He said, I've got all power 
And with God, all things are possible. And with God, nothing shall be impossible. And when I've come to preach this morning, I haven't come to entertain the saints. I've come to reach to some people that need the help of the Lord. I'm going to talk to you from this subject, your response to God's power. Your response to God's power. One more time, would you lay your Bibles down, lift your hands. Let's ask the Lord to move and to work and to baptize this house with his spirit. Would you lift your voice? In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of hell that would try to hinder in this service in Jesus' name. I release faith in this service right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I loose the power in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost right now. In Jesus' name. If you're believing the Lord to move right now, I want you to lift your voice at the top of your lungs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. Oh, let's praise him together right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. You can be seated. I'm here to let you know this morning that the God that we serve does not have some of the power. I know a lot of people on earth have titles and offices and have an element of power, but Jesus declared all the power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. I know the president may have power and Congress may have power. The Senate may have power. A judge, a governor, a ruler of another country may have power. But God really has all the power. And any power that's here on the earth is given on loan by God himself. No, oh, hallelujah. There is no judge that can give a ruling that can overrule the judge of the universe. There is no doctor that can give a final word and say, we've done all that we can do. There is no hope. We serve the great physician, as the Bible calls him. And it's not over until he speaks the last word. He has all the power. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah. I've come to preach about a different kind of God than what popular mainstream religion wants to preach about. Popular mainstream religion wants you to stay in your condition. They allow you to stay messed up and hooked up and broken. I'm here to let you know the real God of heaven and earth has no limitations and he has no boundaries and he's not handcuffed and he's not restricted and he's bigger than your mess and he's bigger than your sickness. Come on. He's bigger than your trial. He is greater than your dilemma. There is nothing that can shake him. There is nothing that can scare him. There is nothing that can back my God in the corner. He's not concerned about the economy. He isn't worried about the job market. Come on, the God I serve is greater than the spirit of racism. He's greater than addiction. He's greater than poverty. He's greater than bondage. He's greater than perversion. There is nothing that is greater than the God that I serve here today. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, he can pull a person out of a homeless slum. He can grab a young man and snatch him out of the hook in the jaws of a gang. I'm telling you right now, he can pull a drunk off of the street. He has no limits on his power. He can step into an abusive situation and shut it down in one moment. He can take the desire for alcohol out of your belly. He can take the desire for meth and crack and coke, everything else you've been doing right out of your system today. He can take the appetite for cigarettes out of your mouth. He can do it right here in this service. 
I'm talking about a God that has no limitations. I'm talking about a God that has no boundaries on his power. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in here today. I've just come to obey God. Not preach you a pretty sermon. The God I serve is greater than cancer. The God I serve, he's got power over back pain and heart disease and sugar diabetes. There's nothing, there is nothing greater than God. Oh, hallelujah. I've come to help somebody become a believer and, and move beyond the place of spectator that you have sat in for so long. Amen. God is greater than any sickness, than any disease, than any, I don't care how long you've had it, God has power over that sickness. He's got power over that disease. He's the one that spoke the universe into existence. He's the one that spoke light before there was a sun. He's got all power. He's the one that spoke humanity into existence and breathed into Adam the breath of life. Honey, he can do anything. He's what created you, and he can recreate you. He can make you new spiritually and physically, and he can do it today, and it doesn't and take him years to get the job done. He can do a quick work. He can, is there anybody here that says, I was immediately healed in my body? Wave a hand. He can do it right now. He can do it immediately. Is there anybody in this house that says it was just a moment? In one moment, he took the craving. He took the addiction. He took the desire for drugs and alcohol right out of me. He can do it again. He's not limited. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house today. He's not limited by anything. Anybody serving that kind of God? Some of you have been serving a God that hangs on your wall. But I've come to introduce you to the real living God today. I mean no disrespect today, but some of you have been paying homage to a God, a man that's just a figurine. I've come to introduce to you the real living and powerful God that you don't have to come bow in front of or bring him a sacrifice. He is in this house, and he's got the power to turn your world around. He's got the power to set you free. No, honey, we're not like every other church where we want you to stay locked up in your messed up world and just give us your money. That's not what we're about. We're the church straight out of the book of Acts, and we believe that Jesus died so you could be free. We believe that Jesus died and rose again so you could be free from sin, from addiction, from disease, from darkness, from depression, from all of it. Hallelujah, he's here right now. If you feel the presence of God, would you praise him for a moment? Hallelujah. 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 He's got power to heal. He's got power to take addiction out of your body. And he's got just as much power to forgive you of your sins. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I don't read in the Bible where all of heaven rejoices over one person healed from back pain. But the Bible does say all of heaven throws a party over one sinner that repents. The Jesus I'm talking about has the power to forgive every sin. I don't care what you're guilty of. I don't care what sentence is hanging over your head. I don't care if your whole family has disowned you because you've been so rotten and evil. Jesus can forgive it all, and he can do it in one moment. He can do it right now. I don't care if you're an abuser. I don't care if you're a junkie. I don't care if you beat people up. I don't care if you 
murdered somebody. Jesus can forgive it all, and he'll do it now. He'll do it now. I don't care how many years you've been trapped in sin. Jesus has the power. There is no sin so great. There is no sin so dark. There is nothing so evil. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for everything and everybody. Come on, he's in this house. He's in this house. He's in this house. He's in this house to forgive, to heal, to save, and deliver. <laughs> There's nothing he can't forgive. I don't care what you're guilty of. I don't care what skeletons are in your closet. I don't care what you've kept in hoping that nobody will ever find out. Jesus can take care of all of it. I don't care what level of abuse that you're guilty of. Jesus can forgive all of it. If you haven't already figured it out, we're not, biblically, we're not politically correct. We're biblically correct. Jesus can forgive abortion right now. I'm going to say it again. Jesus can forgive abortion. Jesus can forgive alternate lifestyles. No matter what you're in, no matter what you're involved in, no matter how twisted it may be, he can forgive it all and he can make you new. I said he can make you new. He can set you free. I wish you had a little more help on that point right there. There's some of you that came out of that, and if he did it for you, he'll do it for somebody else. He came to save people from their sin. He came to pull them out of sin. He came to set the captive free. Hallelujah. All power in heaven and earth. With God, nothing shall be impossible. With God, all things are possible. Now, if it was up to you and me, we'd just stay sick. We'd just stay addicted. Think about it. Some of you have wanted to get free. You've tried. You've done programs. I've seen men go through 30-day rehab, six-month rehab, and the first day out, they're back on meth. I've prayed with them. I've tried to work with them. They're immediately back on meth because a program's not good enough and willpower's not strong enough. It doesn't work. And what do you do for yourself when the doctor says the cancer is spread too far? How many in here has the power to heal your own body? How many in here have the power to pull tumors out of yourself and to cure incurable diseases? You cannot do it. You cannot set yourself free from addiction. How many in this place have the power to forgive your own sins? That's absolutely impossible. Amen. Yet we live and we do our best to try to change and to fix our situation with our own very limited human ability. I've come to save somebody years of frustration and torment and tell you, you might as well give up. You ain't never going to change by yourself. You don't have the power. You don't have enough PhDs and degrees to change your situation. But there is a God that says, hey, I've got all the power, and I do all things well, and I make all things new, and I can do anything right here and right now. Come on, you can't change your situation. You can't fix the mess that you've made. You can't undo the damage, but Jesus can, and Jesus will. He says, I've got the power to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, he's got the power, and you don't. And I'm okay with that. I don't have the power, and I'm okay with that because Jesus does things so well. Hallelujah. But here is the question. 
How are you going to respond when you realize God's got the power to change the place that I'm in? God's got the power to turn my situation around. God has the power to forgive me of my sins and to fill me with his spirit. God's got the power to take the disease out of my body. When you realize that and you believe it, then what are you going to do about it? What is your response to God going to be today? Oh, hallelujah. I've not come to preach you a cute sermon that you can post on YouTube or tweet or put on Instagram. I've come to preach something that will set you free right here, right now, if you'll let it happen. We don't have cute church around here. We have soul-saving church around here. We don't come here to waste time. We're not a community group. Oh, hallelujah. In Genesis, he asked Abraham and Sarah, is there anything too hard for the Lord? I've come to ask that of you today. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything that God cannot do? Is there any sin that's so great that God will not forgive it? Is there any sickness that God is afraid to tackle? Is there any situation that God won't get up in the middle of it and turn it around and flip the lights on and command demonic spirits to leave? Hey, there is nothing we find Ezekiel I don't have time to tell the story but the Bible says Ezekiel the prophet was set down in a valley of dry bones thousands perhaps millions of bones dry bones scattered across this valley there is no hope there is no future there is no potential they're just bones. What can you do with dry bones? There is no value in that. There's no coming back from that. When we see dry bones, that was the end of a thing. Unless you're God. In your world and on your limited ability, that's the end. But where God is, this is a launching pad. This can be a beginning. He asked the prophet, son of man, can these bones live? He said, Lord, you've already got the answer. And before it was over with, bones were coming together. Organs were being created. Skin was covering them. The end of the story, the Bible says that whole valley stood up on its feet an exceeding great army. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. I don't care if you've been trapped in that addiction for 50 years. He can change it right now. What is your response to God going to be this morning? He's able and he wants to do it today. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm almost done. Hallelujah. I've used the story a couple of times now. The man at the pool of Bethesda, unable to get a healing, watching others receive a healing, getting into that miraculous water where the angel of the Lord would begin to trouble the water. He is so paralyzed. He cannot move from the place that he is in. And he said, I have no one that can help me get there. And so I'm trapped. I'm trapped by the physical problems in my body. And some of you are trapped by physical problems. Some of you are trapped by addictions. Some of you are trapped by sin problems. The Lord asked him a question. Will you be made whole? Will you allow me to change this situation now? And that's what God wants to ask somebody in this house. Will you let Jesus change the mess in your life? Amen. God is not going to knock down the door and stroll into your life. Amen. But God gives everybody the power of free will. And the choice is yours. And God is here asking the question, will you let me see? 
set you free today. Will you allow me to heal your body? Will you let me forgive all of your sins? Will you let me fill you full of the Holy Ghost? Come on, what's your response going to be? I wonder if there's somebody that says, I want it. Whatever God can do, whatever he's able to do, I want it. I want it today. I don't want to wait any longer. I'm closing right now. I'm going to tell you, friend, I've spent the last few minutes telling you that there's nothing too hard for the Lord. I read that to you from Scripture, not from my own opinions. But I'm going to tell you there is some things. Not that he doesn't have the power, but there's a few areas God's not going to touch not because he cannot, not because he doesn't have more power than that situation. But there are some things, because God has given you the ability to make your own choice, he will not violate it. The only sin that Jesus can't forgive is the one that you won't give to him. The only sin that Jesus will not forgive is the one that you cannot say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm laying this down. I never want to do this again. The only sickness that God cannot cure is the one that you refuse to bring to him. The only crisis that he will not intervene in is the one that you keep him out of. I'm telling you, God is able to do anything, but it's up to you what happens. I wonder if there's anybody that says today, I'm letting down every wall. I'm letting down every excuse, every barrier of resistance that I put between me and God. I'm tired of waiting and continuing to suffer. Something has to change and it's got to change now. I can't live with this pain in my body. I cannot live with torment in my mind. I cannot live with this addiction anymore. Something's got to change now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He already had forgiveness waiting on you. He already had healing waiting on you. It's not his will for you to continue the messed up life that you've lived for so long. He's had repentance here the whole time waiting on you. All you've got to do is ask him. Amen. That's the first step in Acts, the second chapter of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Peter said the first step is you must repent. You've got to ask the Lord to forgive you and make up in your mind. I'm never going back to whatever it may have been. If it's alcohol, say, I'm never going back to alcohol again. If it's addiction, say, I'm never going back to the drugs again. And when you do that, he will gloriously baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He'll fill you with his spirit. When you ask God for forgiveness, he immediately forgives. He immediately forgives. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things, everybody say all things are become new. Revelation said, and he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. I don't care how long you have felt trapped. I don't care how long you have felt isolated. God can make all things new. He can make you new spiritually and physically right here in this place. I wonder if we could lift our hands right now now and lift our voices unto the Lord. God is about to move in a powerful way. Come on right now. You're about to have an opportunity to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You're about to have an opportunity to be healed in your body. Whatever you came in
in here needing. God is about to show somebody his power right now. Every apostolic, would you lift your voice at the top of your lungs right now? Hallelujah. If you're here right now and you're ready for a miracle in your body, come right now. Come to this front. If you're here and you want the Holy Ghost and you're tired of living the way you've been living, I want you to come right now. Jesus wants to do it for somebody. Come on, if you've got somebody you brought with you, say, let's go down there together and get this Holy Ghost. Come on. If you're here, you don't have to come alone. You don't have to pray alone. We're here to help you. Whatever you need from God, would you quickly begin? Him to move the spirit of the Lord is in this house right now. Come on, it doesn't matter your situation. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter if you belong to another church. I want you to come right now. Jesus is in this house. Jesus is in this house to save, to deliver, to heal. Come on, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, quickly. Quickly, the Lord's doing the work. That's it. That's it. Come on, if you see somebody in need of prayer, lay hands on them right now. Come on, if you need the Holy Ghost, this is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. In the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. If you need the Holy Ghost. Come on, if you're with somebody that needs the Holy Ghost, I want you to give them instruction right now on what to do. I want you to speak to that person. Tell them what to do. Come on. Don't let them pray in ignorance. Tell them what to do right now. If you're here and you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all you've got to do right where you are in this building is lift your hands and ask the Lord to forgive you of every sin and mistake that you've ever made and make up in your mind. I can't live this way no longer. I can't involve myself in this lifestyle no more. God, I'm sorry. I don't want to live this way. I'm ready to get clean. I'm ready to walk away. When you begin to do that, he'll forgive you. You can lift your hands after you have repented and begin to praise the Lord. And the Holy Ghost will come and you will speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the ability. Come on, I wish everybody in this altar would lift your voice right now as loud as you can. Come on, lift your voice. Everybody get involved in what's happening. Find something 